I saw an article earlier this week or possibly late last week. This is in the Colorado Sun, which I believe is a reputable news publication, but who knows? The title is this, Teens Are Learning to Take 911 Calls as Colorado County Scrambles to Find Dispatchers. That's right. Districts in and around Colorado Springs are banding together to teach high schoolers how to be the voice on the other end of an emergency. Now, Drew, we know that's all it is, is just being nice to people on the phone, which is exactly why I excel at this job, because I'm so damn nice. (laughs) I'll read to you briefly. One of the first lessons Scott Brattell teaches his high school students is the importance of being last. You're going to want to be someone who never gets recognized for anything. <laughs> you want to be a 911 dispatcher. No, he never says. He did that. <laughs> the last person to stay with someone through their last moments, even if only over the phone. Quote, you might be the last person that that person ever gets to talk to, Bertel told his students during a recent 911 dispatching class at Callahan Public High School near Colorado Springs. Quote, I've spent time with people in their last breaths, someone sometimes on the highway, sometimes in their home. It just depends. It's sad, but it's, I'm actually thankful that I was able to be there with them so that they had someone with them as they passed away. Now, I think that's an honorable thing to say, Drew, and I think you've made sentiments, I agree. sentiments like that before. Mm-hmm. Rattel and about a dozen students are pioneering a new emergency telecommunications course in the school district that gives students an entry into dispatch jobs they can pursue immediately after high school while still 18. The program comes at a time when El Paso County is desperately searching for more dispatchers. It is among the latest efforts by rural school districts to tap into a pipeline of young people who can step into emergency response roles and help their communities cut down on the time it takes to connect callers with life-saving help. Doesn't that sound good? It sounds great. (laughs) Other schools in both rural and metro parts of the state have rolled out their own programs in recent years to introduce students to careers and emergency response and STEM workforce shortages. At two remote schools in Los Animas County, students have learned how to become emergency medical responders while Denver high school students have spent time in the class practicing CPR and checking blood pressure in preparation to work as EMTs. I, I'm okay with the EMT and just students, should, they should all be taught CPR and how to get somebody's vital signs. I think that's just something we should teach before like the three forms of rock. Uh, but that's just me. Do you know who, do you know the, the, the one that comes to mind that was a, a high school student that was a, a, a paramedic kind of, uh, he was, a, I think he was a police explorer, but he was also a, uh, being taught how to be a paramedic. You, I'm going to you know take the is? hottest take possible and just say Kyle Rittenhouse. That's exactly who I Yes. Was I'm so good. Uh, yeah. Guys, you were about to be saved by Kyle Rittenhouse. In Callahan and other school districts, the focus is on the very first step in the minute by minute frenzy. To keep someone alive and send them help, listening to the panic-filled pleas after they dial 911. Through a broadcast device, Callan School District, which is nearly 440 students in preschool through 12th grade, is expanding access to its 911 dispatching class to neighboring districts, Colorado Springs Schools, um, Miami Yoder School District, nearby Elliott School District. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of school districts who are getting in on this. The courses train students to become certified to take 911 calls in a dispatch center, walking them through the procedures and protocols they need to calmly talk to a person in distress and direct emergency responders to a crisis. A certification takes 40 hours to complete, with students from each district chipping away at their requirement through two hours of class time each week. Students will also learn customer service skills anchored by a sense of empathy. Now, I've talked about empathy on this show, Drew. I know you're anti-empathy. Brutel, who reinforces his class that they have to be Chick-fil-A courteous to these people. There are going to be people who are having the worst day of their lives. Uh, he, this Brutel guy also doubles as the school's security officer. You're going to have to be the person that holds it together for them. You're going to have to be the person that gets them help as soon as possible. You're going to have to be the person that under really stressful situations is going to have to understand that you have to be cool, calm, and collected to keep your composure through the worst of circumstances. Wrapping it up, Bertel worked for El Paso County Sheriff's Office for about 16 years, during which time I bet he was never a 911 dispatcher, including running (laughs) a work release program, patrolling and operating drones to locate missing people. Now as a teacher, he wants to both equip students with the basic information they will need to seamlessly, seamlessly deploy emergency response resources to help them develop the endurance necessary to think clearly in high-stress, high-stakes environment. Even though people are calling on you in their worst day, Bertel told his students, the objective in dispatching is to make it go from their worst day to their best day, as, as, uh, as good a day as possible. 
this guy uh, has all the best of intentions. I think it's, yeah. as I mentioned, he was never a 911 dispatcher. I think he woefully un- under- misunderstands what a, being a 911 dispatcher is. I'll say this part first so I can kind of calm down because I'm getting worked up. It demeans the job of a 911 dispatcher. It demeans the profession to say we can take somebody who's right out of high school, who has no emotional maturity, no life experience, tell them to be calm when things are rough, and expect that these totally immature, inexperienced people are going to come out and do that job for you. It takes life experience. It takes maturity. It takes an ability to handle yourself when things go wrong, not when things go seamlessly, to handle yourself. And Drew, I'll let you take over here, you know, because I need to like take a sedative. But as you kind of alluded, this is a program that's going to set kids up uh, for serious trauma in their lives that they're not necessarily emotionally prepared to take on. I mean, most of them are taking on the trauma of being unfriended on TikTok, and that's destroying them. So before I continue <laughs> with my takes, I'll, I'll let you have some. Go ahead. Um, so you're, you're dead on. Uh, we, we, uh, we see eye to eye on this. Like this guy's intentions are wholesome and they're great. And, and, you know, God forbid we teach vocations as opposed to, uh, you know, the modified sex education they're teaching them now. So I, I do appreciate the spirit of this, like, and it's good to get the, the, the thirst for public service going. It's definitely a huge monumental step to teach kids Chick-fil-A courtesy because um, I, I don't know if it's just me getting old and cranky, but it just seems to me that there's less and less courtesy in the world uh, today as we speak. Um, but I, I, I tend to agree with the fact that uh, exposing these, you know, I, I, I don't know what the level of exposure is to these kids. Like, I, I don't know if they're actually listening to full on 911 calls or if they're just kind of saying, Hey, you know, like this is, these are some samples of what you're going to deal with and they read off a script or something. Uh, but w- what's going to happen when they finally get to the actual 911 call, are they going to be able to keep it together? And, uh, and, and if they're not, if they're using actual 911 calls, uh, or, you know, recordings of actual 911 calls, it's going to be very hard, <laughs> uh, for, for those kids to stick around in that profession for more than a couple of years. And we already have a retention problem. If you're just going to take, pluck somebody out of high school and stick them in a communication center just to fill a seat, I think that you're going to just, you're only going to fill that seat for so long and you're going to kind of ruin the brain of, of somebody that could be productive in another profession. Here's the issue. So every, every year you're having graduates come out of the high school and uh, they're going to go work for 911. Like you said, how long is this going to last? Drew, when you were in high school, what job did you have? I worked at a McDonald's. How long did you work there? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe six, eight months. Oh, okay. So I don't mean to disrespect McDonald's at all. I think a lot of good people start working there. I think it's a hard job. I think I can't handle fast food. In case of point, I washed out of working at a sandwich shop in nine hours. But um, So you cannot become a good 911 dispatcher in a year or less. And what's going to happen is, is these kids are going to come out of the pipeline, as they call it. They're going to sit in a seat. They're going to keep the seat from rolling away for a year. And they're going to be on to something else. Like when you're 18, you have no idea what you want to do in life, even if you have spent plenty of time at a vocational school or a tech school figuring stuff out, becoming even reasonably good at it rather than a raw recruit. But you're going to move on to something else. Also, in this article, this is something that was, I found kind of appalling, and I wish someone would, ad- would have addressed it. But many of the students in this program, they, they're asked what their future aspirations are. They say, well, I want to be a forensic pathologist. I want to be a criminal profiler. These are high-minded ideals. These are PhD tracks. No offense to me, but being a 911 dispatcher is not on the career track to being a criminal profiler or a forensic pathologist. That means you're going to drop out. And, you know, or, I mean, I guess you can go to college and be a 911 dispatcher at the same time. But ultimately, you're going to be leaving it behind. We're not securing long-term success for employment if we have people who are going to be very quickly, you know, sort of disenchanted with the role of a 911 dispatcher because they see themselves as, like, doing autopsies and stuff or running around and being a mine hunter. I just think that that's very silly and someone should tell these children how they should actually become these things. And it generally isn't by sitting in a comm center. Um, they say that these kids are going to be good at it because they're used to a fast pace. Again, at what? At high school? At McDonald's? I mean, as, as opposed to who? Um, 
And they also say that they're used to using technology. Now, I understand a lot of our 911 dispatchers who are approaching retirement, the ones who have been here since the 90s, before that, that technology is constantly changing, that they're constantly being added a new layer that's frustrating for them, that they remember the good old days when everything was on index cards and when you, you just jumped on a horse and rode up to the center of town and lit a candle to let the constable know that something was wrong. <laughs> but uh, by the same by, by the same token, they've adapted, and you can't just say, "Well, kids like to use their cell phones, and kids like to use TikTok, so they're automatically going to be good at rapid SOS." It's it's an it's a leap, and it's an assumption to to say that these kids are just automatically going to be good at. It. And frankly, it's ageist to say that kids are going to be automatically good at technology, or they're gonna they're gonna fit right in. And it's a it's a broad brushstroke. And I I think uh, I think it's it's actually truly a shame. I mean, in a sense, it's good that they're if they want to train people to do this job, but like let's. Let's have the understanding that they're not going to fully step into the role of a 911 dispatcher. And uh, this this uh, security officer who used to be a sheriff's deputy and he used to run drones and things like that. I just, you know, I don't think you should be teaching a course on 911 dispatching if you didn't actually do it. You know, Drew, you know, you had some, you have some credibility here because you were a dispatcher, right? Like if, if you and I, yeah. if you were just a cop and I was just a dispatcher, like we would have our strict lanes. Like I don't really weigh in with like, like a lot of deep police stuff. Like on our, uh, you know, woman uh, putting her boyfriend in this suitcase. Like I was mostly asking questions on that one. I didn't pretend to be the expert, but he's he's going in there and literally training them to do the job and telling them what to expect. And he has some idea because he's been around them. But I, I think the whole thing is flawed from his inception to think that he's going to take an 18 year old person and make him an 911 dispatcher.